Hello and good morning listeners welcome back to Almus Market Mornings your daily dose of global financial updates I'm your host Swaraj Raj Gopal and we have got you covered on everything from currency shifts to pivotal central bank decisions and important speeches plus you'll gain expert analysis on macroeconomic data that's shaping the market narrative right now join us for this episode and navigate the markets with confidence Geopolitical flare-ups are the talk of town ahead of the key data from the US economy. A possible escalation by Iran has had the markets gripped overnight. Good morning, JK. Uh, just a question for you. Has this caused some sort of risk aversion within the market? What kind of moves have you been observing? Uh, good morning, uh, Saraj. Uh, yes, there was a lot of uh, geopolitical news emanating uh, in uh, you know, US uh, time yesterday. And uh, even the how White House officials had... Uh, acknowledged that the timing of Iran attack on Israel could be this week and uh, that we have to be prepared for what could be significant attacks. Uh, yes, the stocks had slightly uh, fallen, but not uh, a big fall like uh, what we have. We have already seen big falls earlier in the week and earlier last week and uh, in the wake of uh, uh, US week data as well as uh, Japanese uh, rate hike. Uh, nothing compared to that, but yes, uh, market was a bit cautious and more caution was uh, seen in, in terms of gold, which uh, made another dash towards uh, its all-time high, uh, but yes, since then it has uh, retreated. Yes, I think market is well prepared, this time it's not going to be a surprise attack and uh, so that probably is means that, you know, the uh, even if there was to be an actual action, it could be uh, uh, somewhat uh, less reaction. But then we'll see what kind of action uh, will be said. So it, it's always better to keep an, an eye on the uh, geopolitics, even as uh, markets uh, uh, are uh, recovering uh, quite a bit uh, from the sell-off of uh, uh, previous week. And I mean, that's more, no more evident than in the Nikkei, which has gained more than 2.5% now. It has uh, erased all the losses that it suffered on last Monday of about 12%. And it's even fill the gap that it created on Monday. So it's it's, it's a very impressive recovery, uh, mainly coming after the Japanese uh, deputy governor of the central bank uh, gave some uh, soothing statements on uh, bank not being uh, in a path to hike rate further immediately. And they are looking at uh, various conditions, including the market conditions as well. Uh, in the meantime, there is a news which says that uh, uh, Japanese parliament is meeting to discuss the monetary policy uh, hike that was uh, seen on July 31st. And this is quite uh, uh, interesting because, uh, you know, the uh, uh, of course, there was a big, big turmoil after the uh, move, but then, uh, you know, the parliament discussing it and even calling the we uh, the chief for the meeting uh, is significant, which means, uh, you know, they are concerned uh, about uh, the impact that they have on the global markets and so which probably means that you know uh, any further moves will be probably less disruptive uh, now uh, just a bit of interesting uh, thing in indian market you know uh, we opened the week with a lot of anxiety about how the markets would open in currency as well as uh, stocks uh, because over the weekend there was a overseas firm that published a research report on the indian regulators uh, but then uh, market took there was a little bit of sell off in the beginning of the uh, day and then it market fully recovered all of that and in the green rupee never even tried to breach even 83.97 so i i think it's been totally ignored by the market and they are back to considering the fundamentals because even indian markets had got sold nearly five percent after the uh you know uh, boj hike and uh, uh, us uh, week data so, um, but then uh, FIA flows have continued to be negative. It was uh, as much as 4,680 crores worth of shares being uh, sold by them. But the currency was uh, not seeing any impact from all of this. And uh, uh, even the global influence was quite limited as dollar index was raised and the market awaited the key data from uh, yeah, in the U.S. on inflation and retail sales. Later in the day, U.S., sorry, Indian retail inflation actually dropped uh, to the lowest level since 2019 at 3.54%, but not to consider that we have beaten the RBS target of 4% because this is entirely due to base effect 
and uh, so the food inflation for example compared to the previous year was much lower uh, therefore it's not uh, it's it's a year on year inflation so uh, the base effect has had a big impact on that uh, importantly the core inflation which excludes food and fuel rose 3. Point, rose to 3.37% as compared to 3.15% in June and this is the first time since September 22 that core inflation has seen a significant upturn uh, after a consistent decline. So, uh, not, uh, so the inflation in India is uh, not too uh, not too high, but it's not really anywhere close to the target. Uh, yes, the base effect will wane away in the coming months. Uh, industrial production uh, came lower uh, at 4.2% uh, versus 5.9% in June. Uh, mainly the manufacturing uh, took a hit, uh, uh, you know coming down compared to the previous month. Uh, uh, so overall, uh, I think we are seeing uh, quite uh, steady markets uh, in India as well as abroad. Uh, and uh, risk is uh, uh, somewhat uh, trying to recover, but with an eye on the geopolitics. And uh, interestingly, on the politics in the US, uh, Kamala Harris seems to be uh, gaining uh, more and more in the uh, polls uh, uh, in, in terms of popularity. So a lot of uh, focus on that because market had indulged in a lot of uh, so-called Trump trades, uh, you know, uh, buying uh, the Bitcoins and uh, also uh, looking to sell the dollar in because there was a lot of uh, uh, focus on softer dollar coming through and all that. But those things are now slightly getting corrected. Uh, so now all focus on um, PPI today. PPI is expected to come lower on all parameters, uh, while the CPI tomorrow will be uh, you know, uh, slightly higher on month-on-month -month basis, but lower on year-on-year -year basis. <laughs> then on Thursday, we'll have the retail sales, which is more important because uh, uh, we'll see how the consum consumption is panning out after a lot of data showed that employment is weakening. So lower employment means lower consumption. So whether it reflects in the retail sales, that is what something we're going to see. So uh, after a uh, quite a long period of lull. We are into, uh, you know, at least in terms of economic data, we are into a very busy period. So let's see how the volatility pans out in the coming days. Thank you. Thank you, JK. And uh, just to quickly summarize, the geopolitics was, of course, in the limelight as uh, markets were uh, basically even in the multi prior weeks, there was warnings by the US on a possible attack by Iran on Israel. Uh, so markets were a bit cautious and even gold made uh, uh, an effort towards its all time highs. Uh, so what JK mentioned is very important. Somewhere markets are prepare, prepping for, a, for an attack. And if there were some action, possibly markets uh, would have well anticipated that unless there is some undue escalation which happens. Japanese index has made an impressive recovery. Uh, it has completely wiped the losses investors had incurred last Monday's on last Monday's big fall. Uh, and for rupee, we never tried to breach its all-time lows of 83.97. So it remains stable at these ranges despite FI outflows and uh, the inflation for India came in at 3.94%, much lower, but majorly due to the base effects. Uh, core inflation saw a bit uh, of upturn, but uh, the inflation is still nowhere close to uh, the RBI target. That's it from us today. Thanks for listening. Tune in tomorrow for the latest in the financial markets.